It is the duty of the Brotherhood of Steam to secure the wasteland. Oh, hey guys, Dave here. Welcome to my studio. I'm already really hard at work on my next project, which is based on a post-apocalyptic universe called Fallout. Specifically, the TV show Fallout. I never actually got around to playing the video games. I know there's a lot of them and they've been being released for the past like 20 years or so, but I never gotten around to play with them. Although, old guy flex, back in the 1980s, I played a precursor to the Fallout series called Wasteland on the Commodore 64. So that's how old I am. I'm Commodore 64 vintage. Yay. Anyways, back to the project. Uh, Fallout is set in a post-apocalyptic world, a post-nuclear apocalyptic, apocalypse, apo it is very hard to say the word apocalyptic on this video. It's going to be a problem, so buckle up. But either way, I recently saw the, uh, the, the TV series and I was captivated by the show and I decided I wanted to make my next diorama set in the Fallout world in that post-apocalyptic nuclear wasteland that we all know and love. Uh, so that is what my next project is on. So I downloaded and 3D printed this model here, which is of the T-60 armor uh, from uh, the show Fallout. I, like I said, I have not played the video games. I don't know how realistic it is to the video games, but the show um, has this T-60 armor from some knights um, thing. Um, it's basically a violent cult as far as I can tell, but you know, they have cool armor, so I'm in on it. I've already gone ahead and painted him up because he's a very, very simple paint job. All he really is is just a covering of gunmetal all over. He's all just one monolithic color of gunmetal. And then some washes to kind of give it that old aged look. Um, a few um, Agrax earth shades and some sepia tones, just kind of all mixed up in and around there. And that's basically all that has gone on to this figure here. Um, one thing I did do to the base is that aside from using real dirt, I added this barrel of radiation waste because in my head cannon, uh, when I think of a post-apocalyptic nuclear wasteland, I'm thinking a lot of barrels of nuclear gunk that's just kind of oozing out and leaking everywhere and just causing a big old mess. So that is what I have going on right here. The rest of this video is going to be all about how do I make this guy into a larger diorama that I can use for my photos. Because as you're probably aware, my goal here is not just to make a model that is look, looks good on the shelf. I want to have something that looks good in camera. And for that, I need a wider area for this guy to live in. Um, so that's what I'm going to do in this video. So I, I'm going to build a the rest of this uh, post-apocalyptic wasteland. Um, I'll probably look a lot like this base. Uh, this base here, I painted up strictly for display purposes. Uh, so this is going to uh, go away and I'm going to build up a larger base. Uh, what it's going to look like, I'm not really sure. It's probably going to be very similar to what it is now where it has a barrel, but have a few more barrels on the side. Maybe there'll be a sign in the background and maybe a, a wall that was obviously from our time period and that obviously got destroyed during some, the uh, nuclear apocalypse, whatever that was, nuclear war, and it kind of got all destroyed and run down. So all the ruins of modern society, as well as some of the nuclear waste that's still lingering around, and this guy being in the middle of it. So that is my goal. So let's hop into creating that post-apocalyptic nuclear wasteland. Let's get into it. This is where stuff went wrong in the most colossal way. At this point in time, I ended up being silly with the X-Acto knife and I cut my finger fairly deeply. So this meant I spent about three hours in an emergency room getting a couple stitches and my thumb patched up. And generally it is going to be okay. But this meant that for the next 10 days, I really couldn't work on my diorama. 
One of the annoying things that happened during this accident is that the figure fell onto the floor and the gun fell off. This means that before I can continue, I'll have to rebuild the model uh, by gluing the gun back on and rebuilding the trigger guard with an old model sprue, just so I have a figure that I can shoot, because without the figure, there's no point in building a diorama. But after a little bit of glue, it came together nicely and I was back to building that diorama. <laughs> We have one finished diorama and I'm very pleased with it. I really like how the barrels came together and aged well and all the other debris. I think it's going to look really good in camera. So that's my next step is to put this guy in front of the camera. It's going to be a very simple shoot compared to some of my other shots. Um, it's just going to be one light as an ambient light, another spotlight in the back to act as the sun shining in. And then I'm going to project a sky behind him just to give him a sense of atmosphere. And that'll basically be it. One thing I am going to try, though, is I want to blow in some dust uh, as a sand. I picture winds blowing across this landscape, and I want some dust to be kicked up. And for that, I'm going to try to use walnut dust, which was recommended by Adam Savage as a good analog for scale model sand. And seeing as I need scale model sand, it seemed like a good choice. So I picked some of this up, and I'm going to give it a try for the first time and see how it goes. Uh, so hopefully it'll work out, and I'll come up with a great image it's now time to hawk my wares. Um, I wrote this book uh, called uh, From a Certain Point of View, A Guide to Miniature Photography, and it has all the tips and tricks that you'd need if you wanna try doing some of this toy photography yourself. You don't have to start off with making massive dioramas. You can just start off with an action figure, a light and a camera, and you're good to go. But this book here has everything you need, starting from ideation, uh, all the way up to special effects, posing, and which action figures to buy, and some tips on post-processing. So if you're interested in uh, miniature and toy photography, uh, please pick up this book. The proceeds will really go to help this channel. Um, and that's me self-hawking over. And I'm gonna take this guy now, put it over to my studio where my camera is, and get started on this photo. Let's jump to it.
right, so that one photo is done, and I think it looks really, really good. I'm quite pleased with the results. Other than the fact that my thumb got injured, but as you can see, Band-Aid's off. The thumb is going to be healing nicely. Um, everything worked out well, and I'm pleased with it. Uh, I don't know if I would change anything aside from the slicing. Uh, so I am pleased. So it's time to put this guy to bed and move on to the next project. And if you're interested in seeing what that next project is, please hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.